Believe it or not, Thomas the Tank Engine has a large online presence, with many fans who watch the show even to this day, who debate the lore and make fan art of it. But I can hear you now. Why? Why do so many grown adults waste their time by watching a show made for babies? So let me just start this by saying possibly the most controversial statement of the Thomas fandom. Maybe you haven't seen it, or maybe you've only seen the show at its worst. But I'm not here to convince you that Thomas is a show that you will think is a masterpiece if you didn't grow up with it. Of course not. I don't care if you think it's a baby show, honestly. I don't care if you think it's a masterpiece. I want this video to be for everyone. However, one thing I will fight you on is that the fandom, the online fan base of people who support this show, are some of the most resilient, talented, and amazing people I have ever met. And trust me, I should know. I'm none of those things. To showcase this, I should be splitting this video up into several parts, to show different significant parts of the fanbase. First off is the creators, and I think these people are some of the most important and talented in the fandom, and possibly even the reason it's still around to this day. But first off I need to give a bit of context. When YouTube was starting out, Thomas was in a really bad place as a show. 2004 saw the start of season 8, where a free strike formula would appear in each episode, with characters dumbed down to their core personalities, and any growth the last 7 seasons showed was reversed so stories could be pumped out quick and easy. This era of the show would not end, sadly, until season 17 in 2014, a whole 10 years later. That's why in that time on YouTube a movement was starting. It started off with people remaking the original stories with toy trains, and slowly over time it changed. Some people were now making videos with a video game for trains to recreate stories from the original books which never made it to the show. Others were making entirely unique stories which anyone could adapt. People were filling the void, a hole in the market for good well written stories about trains. But not only that, but new markets were popping up that the show just couldn't fill. People wanted some stories of drama, LGBTQ representation in the characters, and darker themes for the older fans. All this and more, and people are still doing this to this day on YouTube, and ironically, if it hadn't been for those 10 years of the show being terrible, it may never have gotten this great. Next we have the artists, 3D modelers and editors. This is a section of the community which is often overlooked. They redraw characters in their own styles, they bring OCs to life and even make memes using their own art. I mean, look at this. The best part is that most of them are on Twitter and, as well as everyone else in this video, a lot of them are open for commissions. Some paid, some free and it's amazing to see. The editors as well, similarly, do great work. They bring characters who only appeared in certain areas of the show into others, make scenarios which could never have been seen pan out, and just make really talented edits. Don't like how for years Thomas was in every episode? Well, no wise, as people will just edit him out and give secondary characters the spotlight. Then you have the 3D modelers who make your characters some 3D programs like Blender or even Roblox. It's all honestly amazing and I want to show all of it and I was given a lot of it by Twitter to show off and unfortunately I don't think I'm going to have enough room for all of it but I'm going to try and squeeze in as much as I can but if yours doesn't appear here that's not because it's bad it's just because I got way too much. writers and the law crafters. Believe it or not, the creator of Thomas came out with a big book before he died, full of lore about the show, and while lots of fans love it, not all of them can access it. So people have learnt it and put it in video format to show to people, such as the unlucky Tug with his timeline videos. Writers too make up an important part of the fandom, making stories that many of the creators use. One of the best writers I'm aware of is The Buried Truck, 
who writes a lot for the community. People like him and others post their stories and people use them. In fact, half the audiobooks on my channel were written by me, and the rest of them were written by him. This next part of the fandom is a big one. However, I don't feel like I'm really justified in giving my thoughts on it. You see, these are the people who painstakingly make models of the characters. I don't do this, and I don't think I could give a good enough explanation to why this part of the fandom is good. So I reached out to a good friend of mine, Terror Lamp Studios, and he has kindly written me a script and allowed me to read it out, explaining why he feels like it is an important part of the fandom. So please, enjoy. Being a modeler in this fandom is something that I think has become incredibly recognised in the fandom in recent years. The reason I think most people like it so much is because it brings an opportunity to take these characters, or maybe your own characters, and see them come to life. It's just a satisfying feeling to get them done, and something I think most people live for. Thanks again to Tail Lamp Studios there, wouldn't have been able to do this without him. And last but not least, with the people who make the music. These people are essential because pretty much every fan project uses music. And even this one, the music you've heard now, will help the people who made it listed at the end of the video in the credits, because it is so good and so show accurate. Now, some of the most popular people I know of and the people I use a lot are SA Music, Mavis M and Music of Sodor. And they're all free to use for your videos. And I think I'm just going to be quiet and let you listen to some of the tracks with the names of who made them below.
Now, I had thought this is where this video was going to end. However, on a whim, I reached out to a few people in the fandom and asked them if they could give a bit of an interview of what they think about the fandom and what got them into content creation. And much to my surprise, they have applied, so here they are, starting off with the first interview I got, which was from Narrow Gauge. I asked Tim about what key points he thought people in and out of the fandom may be interested in knowing, and a bit about how he wrote his stories, and this is what he had to say. While it may be related to a series about talking trains, when it comes to writing my own stories, a lot of thought still goes into it, especially with the more recent ones. Even though they aren't part of the official series, I want to be respectful to the characters and the world they have established. As with many things, writing can be a mixed experience in terms of results. Sometimes I make something I'm really proud of. Other times I have something I end up cringing at. It's all about knowing what works and what doesn't, and using that knowledge in future stories. It can be difficult, but it can also be fun and rewarding. Next I spoke to Mr. Ryan, and I asked him was there anyone in the fandom that inspired him to start making YouTube videos, and why he got into it in the first place. What made me want to start YouTube videos? It mainly stems from my creative side, as it's part of myself that I feel confident in. Coming to the realisation I could create YouTube videos changed my perspective on the output of my work. I was mainly inspired by the trains community, as I watched a lot of those videos when I was younger, especially Wild Norwester, which I used to watch with my best friend while we played Minecraft, which is very nostalgic for me. I also watched a lot of Leo Kim video, which I come back to now and again. I only started YouTube with short, simple videos, which couldn't be considered lazy, but were never intended to get me where I am today. I next spoke to an amazing editor on Twitter, at Clay Twin Ben. He makes great edits, and I wanted to ask him what got him into Thomas and what inspired him to make the edits he does. I started watching Thomas when I was a kid, specifically the first five seasons. It became a big part of my childhood, and I became attached to the characters, getting my parents to buy me new toys and DVDs of new seasons. To this day, the little blue tank engine means a lot to me. I got into making the stuff I do by seeing other people make it. I was inspired by people like Jordan and Mason Day, whose image edits are outstanding, and is what made me want to make my own. But it's not just them. Seeing other editors, writers and modellers and more in this fandom is what makes me strive to be as good as them and do awesome work like they do. The amount of time and effort people put into their content is truly inspiring. The talent in this fandom is amazing, and so many people do amazing things. I admire many of you and the stuff you do. Keep up the fantastic work. And before we round out this segment, I would like to give a massive shout out to both Swine 9 and It's Trainboy both of which were massive helps with this video. Now, I've gone through this video, and I've come out of it with a different view than when I went in. Through making this video, I realised the Thomas fandom is better than I could have ever expected. I made this post on Twitter, expecting it to get a few of my friends to let me use their edits and models of my video, but the response in less than 24 hours was insane. It pushed me to make this video better than it was ever meant to be. Do more editing than I ever planned to. It wasn't going to be a rushed video, but I wasn't going to put hours and hours into it. But because of the response I have. But not only that, it's become something bigger than me. I'm just some guy of 100 subs and 400 followers. And yet users from all over, some with only 20 followers, some with 70k subs, are sharing art, models and anything on my post, anything they're proud of. People were interacting, sharing, liking these pictures and it was becoming a wholesome post to share things with people. To show what you were proud of, not just to me and for this video, but with others so they could also enjoy it. The second I saw this, I realised that it wasn't just my video anymore. 
The original video was meant to be an introduction to the fandom for people who didn't know it. As you can see in the introduction, that's really who I was aiming it for. You guys, you wonderful, wonderful people, changed this video into something more. It is still all of that, of course, but it's also a celebration of all of our hard works. This started out as a small idea, but seeing how many people, how many big users and small users wanted to help, filled my heart with joy. And I realised the magic of the Thomas fandom. Yes, it can be toxic, and yes, we have bad eggs once in a while. But at the end of it, when all's said and done, this is a talented fandom, which never fails to surprise or be kind. We've gone through years and even decades of the show being bad, and yet our spirit never let up. I want to thank everyone who commented, liked, or even shared that original post that made all of this possible, as it really made my day, and I hope this video made yours.